Hey, what's up? This is Steve Cardenas, aka Rocky the Red Power Ranger, and Jeff Brazo, Fred Fernandez Rooster from Battle Thunder, and you are watching Steve Venom. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 15 of Team Venom's Power Ranger podcast. Um, today, we've got three co-hosts in myself, Callie and Dennis, as we've got a very special guest in Mark Richardson, who was the prop master for, I believe, over 400 episodes of Power Rangers from, what, from when I was uh, looking at your resume. Uh, so, firstly, thank you for joining us. How's it going? Good, good. Welcome from Huntington Beach, California. Nice. Um, yeah, for, firstly, when I was checking out some of the stuff you did i i saw um that you'd, you'd done hundreds of episodes of, of power rangers which is the main thing that we we, we talk about on here um, but i also saw um a post recently where it was ghost ghostbusters afterlife which is in the cinemas now at the moment and you've worked on that as well didn't you no i'm ah. just a fan i'm just a fan of that uh ah, fair I, enough <laughs> I, I did just finish two weeks ago uh jj abrams pilot um, in Arizona, that's going to be a, a very exciting uh, TV show called Duster. And oh, nice. uh, so we just did the pilot, but when it's J.J. Abrams, yeah, you know, it's going to go right away. It's going to be on HBO. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, um, uh, the, the first thing I'd, I'd like to ask you is what's been the is, the, is there any particular prop that you're most proud of? Uh, you know, I uh, only because it become the most iconic out of the american uh props uh is the communicator you know i you know what you know i saw a, a phone commercial two years ago and they had get smart on a shoe phone and then they had dick tracy on on his communicator and they showed all these different iconic uh um props and then they showed the green ranger talking on the uh communicator i i, I right. thought that was pretty cool yeah. you know Nice. Um, so did you design that yourself then or, or did they give you yeah. a rough thing to do or? Um, uh, yeah, an unsung hero is a guy named Yuda Aku, who is the production designer. He basically um, had me go down to Melrose and, I, and everything I built on Power Rangers, I never had really the luxury to, uh, to really design something. Everything I made was out of necessity not creativity and you know in the communicator i just grabbed a bunch of watches and uh, uh i think a a drain from a faucet and i just glued it all together and uh that yeah, was the communicator originally and i think i have it, it uh, i know you contacted me because you saw that the flyer that all the original rangers had signed i i have three storage units that are huge and every once in a while, I'll come across them. Oh, this is kind of cool, and I'll post it. I think that the original communicator is in one of those storage units because it had a wire that went down the arm into a battery pack. I mean, it was it was really a to do. And you know, after a while, we just I just threw uh, you know the, made the watches and we just CGI'd or whatever the term was at that time. I don't know if we called it CGI, but they put the blinking lights in for me, which was a lot easier. Nice. Well, uh... Callie, over. Um, firstly, hi. Hi. <laughs> um, also, thank you for like you know just being part of the the whole Power Rangers thing. It's you know means a lot to us. That's why we're here. <laughs> um, I think my question first off would have to be like like you mentioned like um the communicator sort of being part of the uh, American props. 
Um, were, was a lot of the like the morphers and the blasters and things like that all stuff sent over from Japan, or did you have to work on like kind of recreating some of the stuff that was possibly not sent over? Yeah, um, uh, the morphers I literally bought from toy stores. I, I went to like Japanese toy stores and they still had the morphers yeah. and you know those things go for like a thousand dollars and i used to like throw them away or people would come into the <laughs> prop room i used to toss it to them but uh, the morphers we used uh and i always loved the fact that and to this day i think uh power rangers use the actual toy you know you, when, if you're a batman fan and you go go to walmart and uh, or whatever your toy stores are out there um and you buy the the, the Batman belt, you know, it's this little belt. When you bought a morpher from Power Rangers, it was the morpher. Yeah. Um, and uh, I always wanted to do a commercial because this actually happened. Um, uh, we were doing a second unit deal and my girl who was doing second unit, filming second unit, forgot their morphers and they wanted to do a scene where they were morphing. I had her run to Walmart. And by this time, this was like the third season, they had the toys out in the, uh, out, out in the deal. And I always sent a kit with the stickers because the only thing different on the, on the morphers were the, the, the power range. It said mighty morph and power rangers on the toy. And, yeah. and uh, I, we, I, I, it wasn't me, but I, I don't blame the person whoever did the pilot. Cause I didn't do the pilot pilot. I was hired right after that. Um, they, they didn't realize how to hold the morpher back then. And our American morphers are backwards and they put power Rangers. And I actually had her stick the stickers on for the, the power. They're waiting around for the power Rangers to morph. But luckily she went to our toy store, bought the toy and they were able to morph. I always thought this would be the greatest commercial in the world. But <laughs> yeah, <definitely. laughs> when, when we started doing this, we didn't have most of the, the Japanese props mm. and, and, uh, I, you know, they, they, there's a place called, I don't know if it's still called this because it's, you know, and uh, it's been a while since I, I know anything since Disney bought the show in 2001 uh, and took it to New Zealand. I haven't had anything to do with it, but rainbow uh, is a big fabrication place in Japan and they would fabricate all these really great foam and vinyl props, but I never, you know, it was me, you know, they had a, they had a team, of, you know, the, the stuff that I had to do, even when I had to fabricate, the the uh the japanese props you know i would just do foam you know that's the reason why when you look at pictures and people make fun of my stuff is you know you see like lord zed holding the staff and it's got duct tape around yes. it and, and you know and i always say well that's zordon duct tape you don't understand that's <laughs> myst <laughs> mystical uh duct tape uh that's the reason why they used it but uh um yeah, a lot of my, that's, that's the reason why, you know, the American props really are, you know, kind of a lot weaker than, uh, uh, especially in the early days in the Japanese. But when we started getting the Japanese props, you know, we were getting, and when we finally got them, they were, they were in, you know, they had, haven't been used for years and we get them, they're falling apart. And, uh, you know, so I'm just hot gluing and, you know, trying to fix it best as possible. Luckily, uh, eventually we got a guy named Ivory Staten to work with us and he's, you know, last time I saw him was on, he called me up. I was up on uh, Sarah Connor Chronicles at Warner Brothers Ooh. and across the street at Universal Studios, he was doing War of the Worlds and he goes, hey, come, come to the set. And I ran over there and he was, you know, he goes, stand right here. And I'm standing, he goes, you know, but you gotta stand right here. And I'm standing right next to the plane crash and Tom Cruise goes running by and Steven Spielberg literally stops right next to me. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm standing next to Steven Spielberg, but that's the kind of quality show that Ivory's doing now. And he's, he's a really great costume guy now in the industry. Yeah. But uh, like the props, like I said, were, were in real disarray when I got them, but they, and uh, when we first started, um, I, I saw a picture, uh, our, our set photographer was a guy named Bruce. And, uh, you know, they wanted, the, when the Green Ranger had started, um, uh, I just assumed that he had a blaster. So I have all these pictures of the Green Ranger and they made them onto posters and everything else of the Green Ranger running around with a blaster because we didn't have the dagger. We, I had to, uh, to make a mold of the pictures. So the American uh, daggers, totally different than the Japanese dagger but uh you know it, it was a a fast cast mold that we used for a long time and eventually we got the Japanese 
dagger, but it was almost too late. By that time, he had become the White Ranger. But but by the time he became the White Ranger, we had a um, you know the the Japanese stuff was like spot on. It was really good, and I was still using their stuff. But yeah, the morphers I got from the toys, uh, the communicators we created, um, and uh, yeah, the blasters is another thing. We used the Japanese blasters, and I don't know why the Bandai made the American version uh, like black and red. They should have just you know, because if you look, you know, everybody knows it says Zhu Rangers, the original show on their blasters, you know, because they used it. The Japanese used it, too. And I, I just love that. I love I love the fact that, you know, in fact, I still have the molds, all the power coins. When I go to conventions, you know, I always I always do a little sign on or whatever, you know, and give them out. I recently um, uh, contacted the JDF. I don't know what you guys are calling them today. Um, I call them pain in the butt. Um, uh, Jason Frank, because uh, um, no, I love him. Uh, everybody does. Um, uh, because I found the mold to the green, the, the dragon dagger. And uh, um, I go, you, you, want to, you want me to make them? And I made them and had them painted up exactly like back in the day. But I was able to get five of them done. And he, I'm sure he's selling them for like the price of a house out here. But um, I, I got it to him. But uh, before I did, just here's, I made a mold of one too. So I have a mold to the, the Dragon Dagger. So if I, I'm thinking about making a couple of them, we'll see what happens. I, I, I don't want to step on his toes, but uh, I might make me a couple of Dragon Daggers. Just I, to... blame you. I wouldn't blame you. <laughs> yeah. Um, Dennis, you next. Oh, yeah. Well, first of all, I just wanted to say that thanks for joining us. Uh, it's so cool to talk to anybody who was involved with the uh, original series. So I guess, uh, like I would say to anybody involved with the original Mighty Morphin, just thanks for whatever you did to make my childhood so awesome. So cool to uh, talk to you. I was very lucky. I was, you know, like, and I didn't even, I was doing weapons for a thing called PM Entertainment. And uh, the production designer literally called me up and says, you know, we would like you to, I don't know how he knew. Oh, I think it was because um, Jim Lotfi did the the pilot and he kept saying, you know, you should get this guy, this prop guy, because he makes stuff on the spot. And uh, um, and so Yuda kept calling me. Finally, I got a phone call. goes, listen, Mark, either you show up tomorrow and you got the job or don't even call me again. So I showed <laughs> up. And then when I saw the tapes and I, cause I had no, I, 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 th I thought it was like a kid show, you know, wacky, wacky kid show. And, you know, I went there, they gave me the videotapes and I'm, a, you know, I'm a Godzilla fan. So when I saw these things grow into monsters and I saw the robots and stuff, I was like, this show is going to be huge. I, you know, and everybody on that show, and this is the truth, thought the show was going to last a week. Even the actors, they, they thought it because it was, you know, so wacky. They didn't think American audience was going to like it. But I was running around going, no, you don't, this is going to be fantastic. They thought I was insane. I was having them signing scripts and doing, I, I go, no, you guys, I, I, I literally had the luxury of all the original Rangers at Bronson Cave turning to them and say, I just want you guys to know this time next year, every kid is going to be dressed like one of you. Every one of you guys are going to be a star. And they're like, yeah, right. Yeah, right. You know? Hey, did you hear that, Amy? Awesome. Jo is, it, is this true? Amy Jo Johnson is directing uh, that Superman and Lois TV yeah. series. Yeah, yeah, I heard she, that. I, yeah, she just uh, directed an episode. Yeah, oh, that's amazing. Yeah, out of everybody, she's the one that kept uh, really pursuing her career, which is really good. Oh yeah, uh, you know, throughout the years, I I, I would work with uh, with some of the Rangers because you know there was such a, a stable of actors, but. Uh, Every once in a while, I was able. I was doing a, a film called Local Voice. I can't think of the act. I should know their names, but uh, um, uh, one of the guys, I think it was from Lightspeed, was one of the actors. And the first day of filming, he didn't know I was there, but he's getting ready. And I walked over and I, I started putting his morpher on him. And he's like, "What? What am I? What's going on?" <laughs> and, I just, and Walter, I think, was uh, the the original Black Ranger who I adore. Uh, I adore all the Rangers, by the way. I really do. They are. Uh, I, I'm so happy for their uh, success in conventions and stuff because they really were wonderful people to work with. But uh, well, we were, I think it was a House of the Dead 2, some zombie film, and he was doing stunts on it. And I went, I was starting to put his communicator on. And he's like, they, they get so confused at first, like, what's going on? 
<laughs> but I don't know. I'm, I'm off on a tangent. Sorry, guys. No, no, no. You know what? It's funny if I could get you to talk a little bit more of uh, about the, uh, uh, I guess I've kind of got a two-part question. If you could tell me whatever you can about what it was like to be working with the, the weapons. And uh, I guess my question is, because I'll, I'm such a James Bond fan. What was it like to basically be like the kind of cue for the Power Rangers? Uh, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I'm a massive, massive James Bond fan. I have a huge collection. And, uh, you know, right. I, you know, even when I was a little kid, you know, I would always, and I, I'm dyslexic. So my sevens were always backwards and I could never <laughs> figure out how, how they drew, made a gun out of the seven because my sevens were always backwards. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I love that. You know, I, I love the fact that, it, and, you know, I mean, I work on shows like The Prestige. I work on big shows, but I'm a, I'm nobody on those shows. Even being a like I was, I'm the set master, and uh, but um, I, I, back then, I guess where, where I'm going with it. Back then, it was you know like the producer would burst into my prop room and go, Mark, I need a device that saves the world. And I need it. We need it before lunch. You know, so I'm like, okay, I got to save the world before lunch, you know. But um, yeah, you know, luckily a flashlight with hot, hot wheels and a G.I. <laughs> Joe tank painted Billy Blue will save the world. But um, uh, <laughs> uh, I, I did I, I did like me there. I did create some cool stuff, you know, like uh, I was watching uh, some show. I think it was like for uh, Christmas and they had those 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 things that you open up and turns into a big sphere, a big round sphere and then closes back down. Yeah. I had found I had got a hold of those before they were released to the public. And uh, I, I want to say it was Andros. I, I, I tell you, I, I'm horrible with the names Andros. And uh, uh, it was I, I believe it was Andros. And I can't remember the girl's name, main villain that turned into Andromeda. Uh, Andromeda, Andromeda. Thank, there we go. Yeah. thank you. Um, uh, um, I may I use that ball and they're playing with that, you know, uh, that ball uh, in the scene. And that was the first time that thing was ever used. Also in Lord Zed's bed, uh, I used one of those plasma plates that, that has the lightning and stuff like that. That was the first time it was ever used on screen and stuff like that. <laughs> I was all, like Bond movies, you know, whatever the new thing coming out, you know, they, they would do it. I was always, you know, looking for stuff, you know, that was coming out or, you know, I, I would just, I, I was always going to like, I don't, do you guys have flea markets and swap meets there? in england yes yeah uh, well more, over here it's more like car boots they, they call them and so we have, have car boot sales and uh just general markets and stuff but it's the same sort of thing so i i you know power range has been propped by 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 garage sales and it's funny because when i first started making props i'd go to garage sales and swap meets and stuff and like a year later they had pictures they were selling posters of the rangers holding the props that I had bought, you know, at, you know, that, that, that swap me, which I always thought was funny. Um, <laughs> the, one of the wackiest props that uh, I, I'm at at one of these uh, swap meets and I find this, this board and it has dowels on it and it's, it's very fifties looking and it's, it's art deco looking. Oh, this is perfect. I painted Billy blue. And, and uh, there was a couple of episodes where Billy's holding it and working with it and it just looked great. I, I didn't do much to it. I painted it Billy blue. <laughs> Year, years later i found out that it was a, a scientology it was for scientology priests and only scientology priests has them because they that's one of those things that they they go you know they they test you or to see if what level of weird scientology thing you are but um mm -hmm. you know and so the church of scientology is like going you can't be using that well i used it years before so it didn't they couldn't really do anything but that was a, a great looking prop though but yeah, I'll be, I'll, you know, back when we had Toys R Us, you know, I'd be down the aisles, you know, taking like, you know, a, a Star Wars toy and a Ninja Turtle toy and putting them together and turning <laughs> and looking at it and look up and some, some mother grabbing a child and taking them away. You know, uh, I've always had, I've always had that problem because I don't realize how ridiculous I, my job are, is like that. And even to this oh, day, awesome. I'll be walking down the street and I'll see somebody wearing a communicator. And I'll walk, run up and I go, hey, you know, I made that. And they're like, sure you did. You know, and they're like, yeah, I got to just watch myself on that stuff. Because people, <laughs> I, I forget just how big Power Rangers are. And when, when people think that that stuff was all magical, they didn't realize it was some old punk rocker in the back room throwing it together with Aqua and 
hot stuff and kicker. <laughs> no, I say, um, well, you mentioned about being a, a Godzilla fan, and I can see from you, your backdrop that you you like the, the creature from the Black Lagoon, which yeah, is uh, one awesome, of my, my favorite universal uh, properties and such. I, I think you're a big horror fan. Um, have you worked on many horror movies and such? Or? Yep. Yep, yep, yep. I, I, uh, I have. I, I did Rob Zombie's uh, um, Halloween. I did. Uh, I was the weapons Ooh. guy. I did weapons on the shootout for uh, Devil's Rejects. Um, I did Piranha 3D. I did just a. a, a I worked for Troma. Um, nice. I actually, I was Toxie for the San Diego uh, Comic Con. Uh, I, I was associate associate producer for <laughs> Newcom High Two and Three and played billions of characters on, on those films and stuff nice. like that. I, I worked for Corman, you know, I, I've, I've worked uh, all the cool. low budget, all the really horrible low budget companies I've worked for, you know, and I, 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 I love doing it. I loved working on those films. You well, know. well, I saw you've, you've got your own Facebook page. Was it horror Ica, Icona, isn't it? Yeah. It's Which... just horror. I C A in a horror icona and it's you know i do do behind the scenes uh p- photos and stuff every once in a while and stuff and you know i uh i i, I can never talk about shows that i'm working on until they're released like uh, like yeah. duster jj uh, abram show i can't talk about it. I, i'm going back and finishing dead to me with christina applegate right now it's monday oh, i go nice. back i do that uh, it's going to be the last season i finished up lucifer recently um yeah, and then after that, I, I, I go, I'm doing a Jeff Bridges show called The Old Man, which well, uh, we started and he, he got sick and we had to shut down, but he's, he's all better now, which is both Duster and The Old Man are going to be action-packed. They're just a, amazing shows. Wow. Well, um, with, with you being such a big horror, horror fan and such and, and working on all those, those wonderful things, um, was there any particular villain or creature on Power Rangers that you, could, that you enjoyed uh, seeing on screen or that you had a hand in or anything like that uh lord zed i think is the most amazing uh okay. it, it was one of he was one of the creatures that I, when i saw the drawings i think john connor did the drawing i go they're not, they're not gonna let us do this character <laughs> no way i loved it you know in fact in turbo and i'm not credited i wish i was credited in turbo a, a guy I, a great stunt guy named greg uh um uh, Ed Neal, we call him Lord Ed, um, was Lord Ed, a uh, Zed. And um, I don't know why, but in Turbo, uh, they wanted uh, Lord Zed he, in the movie. He's in bed with Rita, and Rita's like talking to uh, Detox. The, the, who is it? Uh, Divatox. Thank you. Um, Divatox. And uh, uh, Rita goes, Well, I have to put up with this. And Lord Zed's snoring with a uh, a sleep mask song just going <laughs> well that's me i'm in the suit oh and they, nice <laughs> <laughs> and uh and i remember going oh yeah be lord that hell yeah i'll be lord i get in the suit and it you know it smells like ed but it's like it's like it was like being wrapped in a carpet and i i, I didn't realize but i must be claustrophobic and all i had to do was rock back and forth but i was scared out of my mind and i'm thinking lord zed jumps all you know through fire bombs and fights these guys and all i have to do is rock back and forth and i'm scared out of my tree but yeah i think lord zed was uh my favorite out of all those guys you know looking no. back i think nice. he's pretty much everyone's favorite pretty much oh yeah oh yeah yeah definitely and Just... it was you're... um Unique to the show, wasn't he? Whereas most of the villains came from the Japanese footage, but they they made Lord Zed specifically for yeah for this, yeah. which is awesome. And we kicked ass on that one, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was a good one. Also, I, I, I'm sorry. I was gonna say, speaking of Lord Zed, have you uh, seen the redesign that they did for um, the latest series? And if you have, what are your thoughts? Um, I'm sure it's brilliant. I never saw it. Um, I would have loved to have worked on it, but yeah, I had, no, yeah, I, I saw the toys of uh, Goldar and then they look spectacular, but uh, you know, uh, I don't, you know, even when they did, uh, oh, yeah, there he is. <laughs> I had his backpack in my storage unit forever. I think I gave that away when, when they lost his wings, they gave him a little pack and I, I found, I don't have no idea why I had it in my storage unit, but, um, <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I haven't seen any of that stuff. Um, I think I, there's a little tinge of jealousy that I'm not involved in it, you know. But I get—I mean, I wasn't involved in the the Power Ranger movie, which bombed heavily back then. And um, uh, I mean, but now, now, I mean, because of the success of, of the of the Rangers over and over again, I think now the show still does well, like on um, you know DVD and videotape and stuff. But yeah, none of the new stuff I've seen. I I. I thought that fan film that got banned was amazing. I thought that was fantastic. Did you see that the one with uh, Dawson from Dawson's yeah. Creek in there? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was that was amazing. awesome. I, Jason Frank was like bad mouth, and I was like, it's it's. I thought it was fantastic, but whatever. <laughs> uh, Callie. I, I just asked a question. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Dennis. Then. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Rory. We have it. We I have forgot the order. <laughs> no, again, I guess kind of going back around with, I guess my next question would be once again, as a, a Bond fan, I, I have to see, you know, every, you know, iconic series got the iconic car. What could you tell us about working with uh, Billy's uh, VW bug? Oh, the rad bug. <laughs> Yeah, you, you know, there you go. There you go. It's uh, it's funny. Um, I'm sure the Austin Martin is probably your favorite Bond car. It's that's mine. But uh, 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 the only thing I really remember there's two things I remember about it because it was kind of short lived. Um, one that was an actual beer keg in the back, and I remember <laughs> the art department said, you know, on a Friday night they were going to mount it onto a back of a Volkswagen, and I remember everybody just drinking as much we actually drank the beer and got tanked <laughs> and got tanked that night i mean awesome. severely severely <laughs> tanked that night to do that nice and, and i remember there's a gag where something's supposed to burn in the uh um in the uh console of the car and uh they're like you know they didn't they did there's no way to get a smoker in they try to do tubes and stuff and i go well let's do this let's just blow smoke into a plastic Ziploc bag, put it in the uh, glove compartment. And when you reach in, just squeeze it and the smoke will come out of the, the plastic bag. And everybody's looking at me like, that's insane. That's stupid. No, that nah, won't work. I go, well, let's try it. Blue smoke in a plastic bag, zipped it up, put it in the, the uh, um, glove compartment. Then I think it was Trini reaches in, squeezes it. And uh, smoke came out of the dashboard. It was like this great effect that was made by glad, uh, trash bags uh, oh and, uh, my God. Uh, although that kind of backfired i remember on power rangers turbo they had this one producer and i don't know who he was i think he was a friend of a friend or something but uh he because because for uh, there's two things i didn't do well there was two things i did uh one i didn't do chairs and that's the reason why you never see cool power Rangers power Rangers sitting on the chairs with their logo and their name and i wish i did because i do chairs now and I kind of like, you know, I wish I would have did chairs back then, but uh, Yuda didn't have me do that. Um, he thought I was above that, but uh, I did all the atmosphere smoke. And uh, we're at the, this pirate ship. We're out at San Pedro uh, uh, in, at the ocean. And they, he wanted uh, my smoker to go blue. And he goes, well, he, he goes, put blue um, food coloring in it. And I'm like, Blue, flu no, you, I, what? And, uh, um, and, uh, and they're like, no, no. I go, no, what you got to do is just, I'll smoke it, just put a blue light on it, it'll be blue. But he goes, no, no, no. The last show I worked on, they just put blue food coloring in the smoker and it turned colors. And I go, you know, I know something. Was it the prop guy that did that? He goes, yeah, my prop guy put blue food coloring in the smoker. And I go, right now, at this moment, your prop guys at a bar going and i told him i put blue food color again and it worked <laughs> because that will never work and and he, and he goes well you have to try it i go i don't have to try it and i showed him the food the uh the smoke juice is blue you know but uh i don't know why i'm going off on this tangent but it was just a weird <laughs> it was just weird things where you know some things work that are ridiculous and some things that are ridiculous don't work oh that's awesome oh um I know you mentioned about being um, Lord Zed in the Turbo movie, which is amazing. Um, when I when I looked up at some of the stuff that you've been on, there was um, there's an IMDb listing for you where it's got the amount of cameos that you've made and small roles in the actual Power Rangers series. Was yeah, there anything in particular that you 
was there was there anything that you were particularly proud of um, for your actual on screen appearances in the Power Rangers series? Well, not my on screen, um, but I did the voice for uh, a monster called Serpicon in, in Time Force, and uh, I fight like the you know the Silver Ranger or whatever, and he kills me and stuff. But I you know I got the, it got to be the monster all the way through that. I like that, um, I, and I had a really small part, and it came from Angel Grove, but I. I really liked the fact that I talked him into one doing that episode in black and white. I changed it from, it was supposed to be in a library and daytime. I go, it has to be at nighttime. And I, you know, I got to be a, a werewolf in that. Nice. Uh, I got, I, I, yeah, I was all stoked. I remember I was upset because I was like wanting the, because I had contact lenses and I wanted him to, you know, focus on my eyes. I go, put, put the light. I wanted you know, growl in front of, <laughs> but, uh, they never really saw my contact lenses. But uh, I also like the fact that um, I was the cab driver in the last episode of Amy Jo Johnson's appearance on Power Rangers. And my cab oh. ends up turning into a little crabby cabby, turning into a monster. But I love the fact that I was on screen on Amy Jo's last, uh, last appearance, you know. Yeah. That's always fun. And we've a return because the one-off that she did after that was the turbo movie so yeah you got both of them <laughs> yeah. There you yeah, go. Yeah. yeah so that's right <laughs> every time she appears I'm, uh, I'm 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 on screen um, you want to hear so i think my next question um obviously like you've worked on quite a lot of things as you know the prop guy and that kind of, and doing all that kind of side of things is there any property that you would love to work on but haven't had the opportunity or even you know been asked to work on? What what would be your dream project that you haven't already done? You know, any iconic horror film. Um, I mean, I did Rob's Halloween. I'd still like to do another Halloween. I'd like, I, you know, I, I'm really good friend. Well, I shouldn't say really. That's yeah, me exaggerating. And I look at these podcasts. I go, why did I say I was, I've worked? numerous times with Kane Hodder who was Jason from um, Friday the 13th part 7 to 10 in fact I just did of all things a uh, a uh, investigation in uh, North Carolina where Kane and I st- were the only ones that stayed at this haunted hotel for a week and did, you know, did it, and I I don't believe in any of that stuff and I believe in all of it you know so uh, it was a really great experience bizarre things happened but uh um but i think you know i I would love to work with jj abrams again i'd love to work on star wars you know i think and and and, uh, scott buckwald who's the prop master on this show that i just did knocked the ball out of the park i mean where i normally am asked to create things on shows or help him with stuff um i was on set the entire time and i wasn't able to to do some of the rigs that he did and everything he did was fantastic. I, I was really impressed with it. And so was JJ. And uh, hopefully I'll get to work with that guy again. Cause I, 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 I there was a scene where I, I can't really talk about it, but it, there's this one scene where I, I came back from lunch and um, I uh, was with my, one of my friend assistants and we're talking and there was a guy with a hood on, you know, and we're talking about the scene and I was very, I was, complimentary about how the, how everything looked and blah 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 and uh, my my buddy goes what do you think jj and it was jj i was sitting in between a jj abrams the whole time but he was that he's that kind of cat he he'll walk up to any like a pa and goes oh you know what do you what do you like about the show just a sweetheart of a guy <laughs> but yeah i'd like to work on a mandalorian or star wars a lot of people from mandalorian were there were there I'd kill to work on a Bond show, you know. I'd kill. Oh yeah, to work on a Bond show. Awesome. Yeah. You, you want to hear? You want to hear a funny story from Power Rangers? Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, we had a guy named. Uh, oh my God, I should write people's names. Um, let's just call him Larry. It's not Larry though. Um, but uh, he was the guy that took care of all the the background monsters. So he'd all, always have the monster suits. And uh, he would drive around in this micro VW bus that had faded pictures of Alice in Wonderland on it. And, you know, he was just a kind of a trippy guy. 
and uh, we were at second unit waiting. He was late for the monsters to come. And so we're all standing around uh, a place called uh, Kenneth Hong Park, I think. And uh, uh, we see it coming over the hill. We see the micro vest coming and we're like, finally. And it's hauling ass. And right behind it is a motorcycle cop. And he gets closer and closer. Finally, he pulls away about a block away from us. And we see him pull over. And we see the motorcycle cop get off his bike. And the, the entire crew's watching this. And we watch the cop walk to the you know looking in each window now the way he had the monsters he had it like he was in a school bus they were all sitting there <laughs> sitting up in the seat and and the cop turns to we i have no idea nobody knew what he was saying it's too far away he we see the cop go to his window and then we see the cop just drop his head in hands like this shake his head and just go 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 <laughs> so he gets he drives up there and he starts unloading all the rubber monsters and I'm standing there like, what just happened? He goes, what? What just happened? He goes, oh, I got pulled over. Yeah, but what just happened? He goes, well, he got off his bike and he saw the monsters and he came up to me and he goes, you know, you have a bunch of monsters in your van. And I said, you see them too? <laughs> so the cop just said, yeah, get out of here. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, nice. Oh, that's awesome. So that is fun. Your turn. <laughs> oh man, no, I, I, I just, I don't know that I have any more specific questions. But again, just any you know awesome stories like that that you could tell us. I mean, yeah, uh, uh, it's I, great to hear about anybody's experience. Of, you know, working on the original series. That that's too cool. Yeah, I, I know. I, I noticed that a lot of my story. I was talking to my wife uh, about this. A lot of my, I get a little R rated with some of my stories, and I, I don't know. <laughs> Because I mean, this is a kid show and stuff, but there was a there was a lot of wacky things that happened. Uh, this is something that's extremely embarrassing to me, and to this day, kind of scarred me. We we're shooting at a uh, Leo Creel Beach, and we we're up on the hill, and we had probably about fifty extras that were supposed to be beachgoers, and yeah. Jason Frank um, is dressed as the Green Ranger, and we're up on a hill, and he calls me over, and, and I'm talking to him, and he's in his helmet and everything, you know. And then he yells through his helmet to everybody, everybody, everybody gather around. And he brought all these background people uh, down below us. And we're above standing on this hill, looking down at all these background. And I'm, I'm thinking, what is he up to? Because he's up to something all the time. Um, <laughs> and he goes, this is Mark Richardson. He's our prop master. And people go, yeah, yeah. He goes, he goes I want to show you something. And he pulled my pants down. Oh my God! I'm because I'm in my trunks. I'm a surfer. I'm butt ass naked in front of fifty extras, and I'm in oh, shock. God. Like I don't, e I I don't even immediately pull my pants up because I'm I'm. Uh, this is this is a dream. I'm dreaming. This is not happening. And the crowd's laughing and cheering. And I pull up my pants. Uh, you know, but that you know when people, Jason Frank, you know, tap out whatever. I'm like, yeah, but but he was that kind of guy. He was a very fun on he was a lot of fun on set though he was oh yeah but yeah that was like traumatizing i remember there was a comic con uh and uh uh i was with my my assistant banner and uh, jason frank goes hey, mark mark come over here and he goes come here i want to show you and i was thinking he can't pull my pants down i have my pants on you know but i was still paranoid that he was gonna you know but he did it was his markers he made all the props people were cheering and stuff and I kept waiting for him to try to pull my pants down. But uh, I think every time I see Jason Frank in the back of my head, go, he might. Oh, no, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? Yeah. <laughs> my pants might be being pulled off. You know, uh, do you, guys, you guys know about Morphicon, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's huge. You know how that started? Donna. I, uh, I was selling a bunch of my junk. I shouldn't say junk. My, my stuff that goes for thousands of dollars now. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, I had so much. I, I have like monster toys and stuff, but I do have, like I say, you know, I have molds of stuff. So I make power coins and stuff. And I was selling them at a place called Frank and Sons. And a friend of mine was selling his stuff next to me, a guy named Scott Zellner. And uh, I go, Hey, um, you should, we should do a convention. I mean, I know the Ranger. I, I go, you know, I, I have, you know, 
I have Walter's name. I have Steve Gardena's names. I have those guys. I talk to those guys all the time. They'll come and they'll come do this convention with you. I go, I could sell some of my props. He goes, oh, I'll think about it and stuff. And I was getting, I, I, I limp. Uh, I have really bad knees now because of punk rock. Um, but uh, um, I was getting some knee surgery and I was in the hospital and I get a phone call from Scott and he goes, hey, Mark, I, I'm doing Morphicon. And I'm like, what the hell is Morphicon? He goes, the convention. Remember you came up with the convention you wanted me to do? I go, oh, okay, I, you know, cool. That sounds great. And he goes, well, you know, come down. I wanted to do, I, I go, I'm in the hospital. I can't come down. And I started getting phone calls from all these people saying, hey, you're in the hospital, sorry. But they were all from Morphicon. And now that thing is monstrous. That thing, I mean, the huge. guy, it's, it's, it's huge. And it was all because I, I turned to him, I go, hey, you should do a convention about Power Rangers. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so I, if anything, I get a free table. I'd like to have a little percentage yeah. of that magic now. You know. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, that that's been awesome. We'll um, we'll we'll wrap up because I'm I'm conscious of the amount of time we've taken of yours and such. But it's been really awesome talking to you. Thank you so much for coming yeah. on. I, I have a lot of fun. I'm you know, like I said, I'm very fortunate to be at the right place at the right time with uh with uh, that show. Um, uh, and uh, you know all the success. I mean, there are things that I did was kind of snidely. I turned the show union, which I think it should have been union all along, but uh, the cast and the crew of that show were wonderful. It was a great experience for me. Um, it was extremely low budget, but you know, it was a lot of fun. And like I say, you know, uh, I, I loved them. You know, I'll, ne I'll never have uh, the ability to, you know, just create things, you know, and not have, you know, when, whenever I created a prop, well, like nowadays, if, if there's a prop that to be made on a show, um, you have to go through the production designer, the showrunner, the director, you know, uh, everybody has to look at this prop and okay it, you know, back then it was just like, Mark, we need it as soon as possible, you know? And so I think I was the reason I was able to make the things that I made and, uh, and I'm very happy for the success of Power Rangers. I think, you know, in Japan, it had been going on, I think, for like 40 years before we even started. So I think that shows it's such a great concept that it's just going to go on and on and on. And it's wonderful that you got there's fans like you guys that really support it. And I appreciate that. Oh, thank you. And um, again, I think I speak easily for, for the rest of uh, our team. Um, you'd be more than welcome to come on whenever you fancy it again because it's been such oh, yeah. a blast talking to you and hearing all your stories so yeah yeah whenever you know it's you know you guys go hey let's get mark on you know give me a call you know i i i uh i enjoy doing it you know okay thank you 